Okay, today with me on NFT Stars, I have Sharan Hegre, who has managed to explain the complex fintech world to his entire social media audience. So, uh, Sharan, welcome to the show. To begin with, how, I mean, you started this during the so pandemic. Much. How did you That's get right. into this entire thing? And how did you think that it would probably work out or you, you weren't sure at that point? Well, to be honest, I was absolutely not aware that it was going to be this big. Uh, to be honest, I started um, because I had a lot of free time once the pandemic hit. So I used to work as a management consultant uh, before being a full-time content creator now. Mm -hmm. And back, as you know, management consultants, they travel a lot, work 14, 16 hours. And out of that, you know, probably three, four hours were spent on the road and in flights. So that went away once the pandemic happened. So I had a lot of free time that way. Started consuming content on YouTube. But I got inspired by a lot of uh, creators on YouTube to start my own content. And something that I was really good at was personal finance. So I thought, let me start making content on that. Started off with YouTube, then moved to Instagram to promote my YouTube videos. Uh, but to be honest, yeah, I never really expected it to be this big. It, was just, it just began as a hobby. And uh, very fortunate that now it has become a full-time career. Right. And uh, how did you, I mean... Uh going back even before that how did your interest in finance start so to say maybe from childhood or or is it something that yeah. you became fond of uh interested in maybe at a later stage well finance for me has always been uh, you know special uh because as a kid um me and my sister uh i mean my, my mom i mean she used to inculcate very uh you know, good financial wisdom to us. Um, by that, I mean that, you know, they, they used to allow us to understand the opportunity cost of everything that they're buying and make us question whether this is really worth buying a particular item or not. And I, like all of us, when we were little kids, I used to get money from our grandparents for our birthday. And I used to never spend it. I used to just keep it in my money belt. By the time I reached 18 years old, when I was in third year, third year of engineering, that's when I had accumulated close to 50,000 rupees. And that is when I, I started thinking, okay, I can't just let it uh, sit idle as cash. I need to do something about this. And like any um, person who, who is interested about investing, the first thing that we want to learn about is stock market. So that is what I did. Uh, but then slowly I realized that there are so many foundational concepts that you should know, uh, which most people forget about uh, when it comes to investing, but we all directly want to dive into uh, the stock market. So if you see content today, I talk mostly about the boring personal finance things, insurance, taxation, which is really, really boring. That is how you know I uh, became really good at finance. And then it was all self-studied. I don't have a formal background in finance. Um, you know, I started by watching videos and then reading. By the time I watched videos, I was very comfortable with the financial jargons that moved to reading full articles. Enjoy reading articles, and now I can read a, a huge article of finance within you know half a minute because I'm very comfortable with the jargons used now. And then I finally moved to books, right? Um, and, and that's how the entire journey began. Okay, and you know, I, I read uh, something else about you as far as the whole NFT uh, world is concerned. Your yeah. unique outro sold for sixty five thousand. Now, for normal people yeah. like me, what does that mean? What is unique outro? Yeah, so the the use case of my NFT is applicable only to my audience, right? So the idea behind an NFT is that it is a, it's a non-fungible token and it derives its value uh, from the people who values it, right? For example, let's say a Pokemon collectible might mean nothing to me and you, but it could mean thousands of dollars for someone who is a big Pokemon fan, right? Mm -hmm. Similarly, my NFT... Um, so that my outro is my signature outro where I say follow my man finance with Sharon. So that has been animated and created into a unique uh, NFT. Now the application or the use case behind the, uh, the NFT is that the person who owns it uh, gets the opportunity to do a collab with me. Right? So that video will be posted both on my page and on his page. It could mean nothing to many people, but it could mean a lot. It could be a huge deal for uh, you know, someone, a person in my community or another content creator who is looking to, you know, expand the reach of his audience. So mm -hmm. that is the, the the fundamental difference between an NFT and a currency. Currency has uh, the same value for everyone. A hundred rupee note is same as hundred rupee note in your wallet. Uh, but an NFT uh, might mean the world to me, but nothing to you. Uh, so that is the story behind my NFT. Okay. Okay. That, I think that sheds some clarity on the matter. Also, you know, as yeah. far as the future of NFTs and the metaverse is concerned, now there's a huge, there's a huge segment of population which says that you know every few years a new fad comes along and you really don't know what exactly could work, what could spectacularly fail, 
So what exactly, right. according to you, is in the future of NFTs and what are the sort of the risks involved which people should be aware of? Hmm. Sure. So NFTs are of two types. One is the NFT which has a unique story behind it. For example, that uh, Beeple Art NFT which sold for $69 million, which is essentially, you know, uh, every pixel was designed by uh, a particular person. So it became a unique uh, piece of art by itself because it had a story behind it. And due to that story, it derived an incredible amount of value, right? And there are many NFTs uh, like that which are being uh, sold today. Uh, but that is exactly where the bubble lies, I feel, that these story-related NFTs, where it could be, you know, a random piece of uh, cartoon or let's say just, uh, you know, I've seen NFTs, you know, of cats and dogs being sold, right? So the, the, I think that is where the bubble lies that eventually people will realize that this is just a random piece of artwork and not really worth that much money. So that is one set of NFTs. Second set of NFTs which actually have an application associated with, for example, my NFT, right? There is a real world application associated with my NFT that it is not just a, a video of me, that there is a use case behind it as well, that the person who owns it gets the opportunity to collab with me. That's number mm -hmm. one. Uh, mm -hmm. Another example of a real world use case based NFT is Gary V's NFT. What, what happens there, the owners of those NFT gets access to his Discord community, right? And in this Discord community, I get to have get the opportunity to interact with Gary V on a much mm -hmm. more deeper level, right? Instead of him talking to 10 million people on across the social media platform, now there's just 1,000 people that he can focus his attention on. That's the difference, right? And then there are multiple levels within his community. For example, if you reach the highest level, you can also get an opportunity to do a one on one talk with them, right? So these are some of the unique cases that are built into NFTs. And lastly, I would say another application in the real estate sector, wherein let's say there is this million dollar property in, let's say, Goa. Now I want to buy this and give it out for rent, but I don't have a million dollars. So what we can do is we can divide this into 100 pieces, and then each of us can take, let's say, $10,000 each of this property. And then this NFT will sort of um, ensure that. Uh, the records of who owns each and every bit is is immutable on the blockchain, right? And whenever there is rental income coming, it is automatically divided across the 100 owners of this property based on the smart contract. So there are so many applications which can be built in. Um, uh, coming to the risk, like I said, you know, be wary of uh, story-based NFTs because they don't have a real-world application. Uh, but NFTs which have a real-world application, uh, I, I would put my money on that. Okay, okay. I think you'll make a you'll make a great teacher or lecturer in the future. But uh, thanks a lot, Sharan, for talking so to much. us and yeah. uh, all the best yeah. for the future. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you.